Hello, I'm Kurt, and this is Danny, and today we're going to show you how to play a little eight ball. That's a name of a pool game that we really enjoy playing. First, I'm going to show you how to select a stick. If you'd walk with me over here, we'll take a look at our selection of sticks. And what we do is we have some shorter sticks and some longer sticks, and I usually like to get a longer stick, which will give you a straighter shot when you're playing the game. So if you take a stick out of the rack and then bring it over to your pool table, and what you want to do is just roll it a little bit and just make sure that it rolls pretty smoothly. If it wobbles up and down, that means that you're having, you have a warped stick. And Danny doesn't like to play with a warped stick, and neither do I. So we're going to just go ahead and use this stick. It looks pretty solid. And now I'm going to show you the next step. After you select your stick, you want to make sure you have chalk on it. So we're going to just take this chalk right here, and we're going to just back and forth, just rub it on the tip of the cue, and that'll put a lot of chalk on there so your ball will not slide off the cue. It'll go straight when you hit it. Now Danny is going to show you how you rack the balls. Danny, would you step over to the other side of the table? You have a, a wooden rack, and you place it over all the balls. It's in the shape of a triangle. In the game of eight ball, we take the black ball with the eight on it, and we put that right in the center of the rack. And then in the back two corners, we have one solid ball and one stripe. One ball is all one solid color, the other has a stripe in the center. And now he's going to take those, and there's a little dot right there on the table. We're going to line the front ball up on the dot. And why don't you leave the rack on there for a minute, Danny? Because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to decide who breaks. That's whoever hits first. And we do that by doing what's called lagging for break. So Danny, why don't you take one of the corner balls out temporarily, and we'll decide who's going to lag for break. Okay, now we're going to lag for break. What we do is we stand at the opposite end of the table where the balls are racked, and we each take one ball, myself and Danny, and we're going to hit the balls all the way to the other end of the table, bounce off the cushion, and come back to this side of the table. Whoever gets closest to this side of the table without hitting this bumper will be the one that breaks first. So Danny, are you ready to go? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to count down to three, and we'll hit on three. One, two, three. Mm. And as you notice, Danny hit the cushion, so he's disqualified. I did not. I'm closer to the cushion, so I'll be the one that will break first. So Danny, you want to take that ball and put it back in the rack for me? Thank you. He's going to put those balls in there nice and tight. You try that one more time. It doesn't always work the way you want it to. Good job, Danny. All right. Now Kurt's going to break for you here. Here we go. Yeah, not a bad break. Got a couple in. Now we have to look and see what went in. We had a solid go in the side pocket, and we had a solid go in this corner pocket. So right now, I have solids, and Danny will have what's left, which will be the stripes. So now I'm going to shoot until I miss a ball, and then Danny will take a turn. And I'm going to shoot at the solid balls. I need to get in all the solid balls first. There's seven solid balls and seven stripes. And then there's an odd ball, which is that black eight ball. And then once we're done getting our own color in, or our own type of ball in, excuse me, then uh, we have to call the pocket that we're going to shoot the eight ball in. And then once we call that pocket, shoot the eight ball in, we would then win the game. So I'm going to go ahead now and shoot at one of these solid balls down on the other end of the table. I, I didn't tell you, but you look over the whole layout of the balls and you shoot at the one that's easiest, that you believe is the easiest to knock in the pocket. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to shoot. There's a yellow one and there's a purple four. I'm going to try to hit the one into the four and knock the four in the pocket. And I did accomplish that. However, I didn't line up my next shot very well. So I don't have a shot at this one ball any longer. So now I have to assess the situation, look at all the other balls on the table, and see if there's anything else that I could 
shoot in a pocket. It doesn't look like there's going to be anything easy. So I'm going to attempt to shoot this two ball into this seven ball, the blue two into the brown seven, and see if I could shoot that into the corner pocket there. And as I do that, my cue ball is probably going to ricochet off the two and come over here somewhere. And I do not want to knock in Danny's stripe. I don't want to knock any of his balls in. We want him to knock his own in. So I'm going to shoot very gently. I'm not going to hit very hard here. And I missed my shot. So now it's Danny's turn. Danny, why don't you go ahead and see what you have to shoot at. Danny's going to assess the table and look at all the stripes and determine what's the easiest shot for him to make. What are you going to shoot, Danny? Tell us. The 11 in the corner. Nice shot. He makes that one easily. Now he's going to take another shot. Now I'm going to hit the 9 in this corner. Beautiful, beautiful. He's just warming up over here. Uh, I think I'm going to hit the 12. Twelve on the side. Yep. Nice shot. He looks like Willie Moscone, but he's a little younger. I'm gonna hit the fourteen. Sneak it past the ten. Nice shot. He's getting better as he goes along. <sighs> All right, Danny. You're down to three balls. Danny has shot four of his stripes, and he has three remaining. Yep. I still have four of my solid balls remaining, so he's one ball ahead of me. I don't know, I should bank the 13 in this corner, hit the 10. Oh, Danny's talking about doing what's called a bank shot. Now on a bank shot, that's where you hit your cue ball into your object ball, it bounces off a cushion, and then you want it to go into a pocket. Now if you remember your geomet geometry, excuse me, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So Danny has to decide, as he hits this 13 ball into this side cushion, uh, where the ball is going to go. So we want it to go right in there. So he's going to have to try to get the right angle, remembering his geometry, and see if he can bank that 13 into the corner pocket. And as the way he's been going, he makes a beautiful <laughs> shot. Beautiful shot. I hope you're all watching closely. You don't see that very often. Now Danny is down to two of his stripes. I see you've been practicing, Danny. And Danny just shot the 10 stripe ball into the corner pocket. He has one ball left, which is the 15 stripe right in the center of the table. Now, one thing we didn't talk about, when you're playing the game of eight ball, this is the black eight ball here. This is the neutral ball. You cannot knock that ball in any pocket until you've knocked all your other, until you've hit all your other balls into your pockets. So if Danny accidentally were to hit this eight ball into a pocket, he would lose the game. Or if I were to hit it in, I would lose the game. So if he's going to shoot at his 15 now and try to, to hit it into a pocket, he has to be very careful he doesn't knock the eight ball in by mistake. All right, Danny, would you go ahead and take your shot? Mm -hmm. Also, I have to hit around the two. Yes, and Danny mentioned he cannot hit my ball first. He has to hit his ball before he hits any of my balls, or he's disqualified and loses his turn. I think I'm going to bank around this two and away from the eight. He made a slight mistake there. He actually hit the eight ball, but he didn't knock it in any pocket, so he's fine. Now it's my turn. I have to assess all the balls and see if there's anything I can shoot in. With four balls, there should be many shots on the table. So let's see if we can get one in here. We're going to try to take this seven ball and bring it all the way down into the corner. Oh, and there we go, just like planned. Now, the next shot, we're going to try the two ball into the corner. Very good. Now that leaves us two solids. I have the green six and the yellow one. And the yellow one looks like it'll be an easier shot, so we're going to shoot that one first. Right into the corner pocket. 
drawing the cue ball down closer to the six to try to make an easier shot. What I believe I'm going to do is what Danny did before, and we're going to try a bank shot. We're going to try to hit the cue ball this time into the cushion, then into the six, and knock it into that pocket over there. So I have to remember my geometry. The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So I want to hit somewhere right about here on the cushion. So I'm going to go to the other side of the table so we can do that. Here we go. I hit the six, but I did not hit it in the right place, so I did not make the shot. That gives Danny a chance. With the game tied now, one stripe to one solid, Danny will try to sink the stripe ball in one of the pockets. Two wins. If I get this long one, line myself up to the eight. Tell us what you're doing, Danny. I'm going to see if I can put this 15 all the way down in the corner pocket and then line myself up for the eight and go for the win. Close, oh. Danny, very close. Didn't quite make it. All right, so I get a second turn here to try to put this six in somewhere. Now, I'm going to attempt to put the six in behind the 15 ball into this corner. However, I have to remember that as I deflect off of that six ball with my cue ball, it could possibly go in a pocket. What I didn't explain is if you get the cue ball in a pocket, you lose your turn and the other player gets to set the cue ball up on this end of the table, which is the opposite of where the balls were broke, and they have to be put behind the second dot. There's a dot on the table here. Can you see the dot on the table? And there's a dot on the table here, and there's another dot here. So you count from the back of the table, one, two dots, and you go across, and the cue ball would have to be placed somewhere in this area, and the cue ball would have to be shot across this line to the other side of the table. And that is only if someone shoots the cue ball into a pocket by mistake. So right now I'm going to attempt to put the six ball in that pocket, and we'll see what happens to the cue ball. Hopefully it won't go in the corner. I did not make the shot, and I did not knock the cue ball in the corner. <laughs> so now it's Danny's turn again with the stripe. I'm going to see if I can bank it back into here. A little different bank. Bank the 15 instead of the cue ball. You don't want to try to slice it into that corner, huh? I think I? Personally, I would think that's an easier <laughs> shot. Uh, maybe. Do you want to rethink it? Hmm. No, I think I'm going to try to hit it in here. Okay. Good try, good try. All right, there's still two balls on the table. Anybody's game at this point. I am going to attempt a long bank shot. I'm going to try to take the six ball all the way down onto that far cushion and put it into this corner right here. Let's see how this works. And I lost the game. <laughs> Remember, like I said, boys and girls, if the eight ball is knocked in before you've shot in all your own colors, you lose the game. So, Danny, <laughs> that was fun playing. I hope you all learned something, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you.